Okay, next up we're going to do the um, stamping on the book pages, the old book pages, and then we're going to use water soluble um, wax pastels uh, to, to color it in and some gesso. Um, so, and some, oh, and distress ink too. I even did the inside pages, just distress the inside pages. Um, most of them, anyways. You'll see I colored some and left some just plain stamped. Um, so, I've already, I've already got, uh, where'd it go? Oh, my stamp set, this, this time I'm going to be using, um, this is a Stampin' Up set. And it's the flower shop. And it's got a coordinating punch. So it just kind of makes life a little bit easier. That way you don't have to fussy cut around stuff. But you can use any stamp set you like. Um, if it doesn't have a punch, you just cut it out with scissors. Um, so what we're going to start by doing is I've chosen um, that flower just because it's got open petals. And I want it to be able to color it in like a coloring book. And the, if for, for me to be able to cut it out easier, I've put a mark on my stamp so I know which way it needs to be facing so that the, the, um, the punch can punch it out. Okay, so we're going to be using Ranger Archival Ink. It's waterproof. And I'm just going to stamp it a whole bunch of times. Alright, now that I've got that stamped a whole bunch of times, I'm going to take my punch. This punch is also from Stamp It Up. I know I'm not a Stamp It Up demonstrator. I just happen to like some of their stuff. Um, okay, so it lines up. The reason I've marked it so that when I stick it into punch, I'm more accurate. And I don't have to keep fiddling around. And see, it just cuts through there. You know, it's no problem. Makes it a lot easier, a lot faster. So I'm gonna punch these out. Um, punch them all out, and if I've got too many, well, then we'll just put them in the pockets when we're finished, and have them for when we are creating in our our art journal. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause the video, and I'll be back. All right, I've got them all punched out um, out of the paper. I'm sure I've got plenty more than I need and I'm gonna get all my pages and my cover and stuff I'll put a link below to the first video um, where it shows you how the, how I got the pages and the measurements and all of that um, and how to put it together I'm not gonna I'm probably not gonna show that in every one of these techniques because then make it longer than it needs to be all right so I got all these pretty flowers you could also have stamped different flowers you didn't have to stamp all the same one I just happened to like that one because of um because it's um, open. All right, I'm gonna start with my cover piece. Um, remember, this is gonna be the pocket on the inside. And then there's the spine, and then there's the, the hingy part for the flap. So, we're gonna have the, the flap on my left-hand side here. And we are going to glue these down with a glue stick. I happen to have, at the moment, I have uh, paper studio glue stick. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to get one of our flowers. We're going to put glue all along the back. Oh, yeah, sounds easy, doesn't it? <laughs> and then we're going to stick it down. And what I like to do is use something flat and just kind of like squeegee it on there, if that's a good way to say it. Where you just kind of really get it on there good and really get it connected with the paper. And I just folded the edge over. Um, I'm not real concerned about what it looks like on the inside. You can obviously trim that off if you want to. So I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going to pick a flower and then I'm going to add it to the cover. Just when, you, when you're going on one of these little seam areas, one of these little parts that are going to be folded, try to get most of it across that, um, not because the little bitty pieces would be tend to want to come up where the bigger pieces won't. So you just kind of burnish that down a little bit 
and then pick another flower. Try to go in odds. That's why I like to do things the odd, odd numbers for me look best. You can have them overlapping because we're gonna seal this in the end with matte medium, so you're not you know you're not gonna hurt anything. I don't know where I want to put it. I don't want to overlap too much. Let's go right here. Decisions, decisions. I now I need to add one more because I said I don't like even numbers. I like odd. I messed that one up when I cut it out, so we're just going to hang that one over the edge. And that way you won't even know that I messed it up. It looks pretty already. You can leave it just like that if you wanted to. You didn't have to do anything else to it. It's just um, pretty the way it is. These are German text pages. I have no idea what they say. It just happens to be the book that I have right now. So you can put as many or as few as you like. And just keep going until you are happy with the way it looks. Okay, so now we've got the cover covered in um, pretty little punched out flowers. So now we're going to do the same with our pages. Now remember in the other video, this is this is one whole signature, but it's going to get torn in the middle. That six inch score line, it's going to get torn there. So this is the set of pages and this is a set of pages. So what I've been want, what I've been wanting, what I've been liking is putting one on each um, page. So, um, the same way. You know what, I was just sitting here thinking, maybe, maybe we should go ahead and tear it so that if I wanted to put some on the edge of that side, I could. You just want to avoid the seam, the seam, the um, the crease in the middle. Just don't, don't put anything there. And you don't have to do this either. Yeah, I've got glue stick getting all glooped up, glooped up. And you can cut those off or fold them over, whichever. There's one. So since this um, is owed book pages, whoops, I might not be able to get that back up. I like the vintage look better. So, goodness. I glued in the same spot too much. So I'm going to try to pick colors and, um, you know, use distress inks to make that vintage look, you know, around the edges. All right, so now we've got all of our uh, punched out uh, flowers attached to the pages except for two. We have two loners um, and the cover's finished. So I'm going to use these water soluble Neo Color 2. I, I don't know how to say that so I'm just going to show you. <laughs> um, these are fun. These are um, extremely creamy and I know they just look like crayons but 
you can cover a lot of space in, in a very short amount of time. You can go directly to paper with the crayon or you can use um, you know, your paintbrush to the crayon and then go to the paper. It gives totally different techniques. But I'm going to also use gesso, um, just white gesso that I've put into a, a little container here. Makes it a little bit more portable. And I've got a thing of water. So now I just need to pick my colors. This is one of my favorite colors. This is um, turquoise. Turquoise blue, it says. So I'm just going to randomly, I'm going to start with the flap. I'm just going to pick one. And you can color directly onto the flower. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll do one petal where I directly go directly to the flower with the crayon and then I'll do the other petal where I take it from the crayon to the to the flower. So I'm using a really soft bristle brush here and I'm getting it wet and then take it straight to that crayon and it moves around. It's like watercolor. Um, it's really really pretty. If you haven't, I need a paper towel. If you haven't tried something like this, um, it's just so easy to work with. And then I take my gesso and just kind of like highlight with it. And then if I feel like it's whitened it up too much, I just go back and take some of it off. Gesso um, doesn't dry as white when you do this technique. Here, can you see that? All right, and then I'm going to take it directly from my crayon with some water on my brush and get some color and then go to the petal. It works the same way. Might be maybe a little bit more transparent that way, but then I'm gonna add a little bit of gesso. While it's still wet, I think it looks better while it's still wet. I mean, you could go back and add your highlights and stuff um, if you want to. See, you, can, you can't really even see the difference between the two. Uh, but it just depends on which way you like to do it. So, to speed it up, I'm going to just add some color to this petal, to each one of those petals. And then I'm going to get it wet, move it around. A little bit of gesso. I'm just kind of swiping just to give it, you know, to make it look like it's um, three dimensional instead of two dimensional. You can then even go back and just add some dots in the center there. And I might even come back even later once it dries and add like highlights to it. So that was with the turquoise. So I'm going to keep out the ones that I'm going to do the same colors all throughout. So that was pretty turquoise. And then let's see, this is a pretty ultramarine blue, I think. Yeah, I'll use this one, I think. Yeah, this is ultramarine blue. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go directly. You don't even have to color it completely. You can just scribble, basically. You can just scribble straight onto the to that area, and then you, you, when you get it wet, you just move it around, and it's just so pretty. This this also you know allows you to be a little bit more precise. Um, where you get your color at. The watercolors are, would work really good with this too. Um, oops, I got too much. I got too much water there. Let me get a paper towel. But I think watercolor uh, might be thinner compared to these, so it might not go on as nicely as these crayons do. doesn't even really matter 
how your strokes are, it's going to look good in the end no matter what. And then go back and put some dolts. See, isn't that pretty? And if you if you go a little light light handed with it, you sh you should be able to um, see the book pages underneath. Now I'm going to my my purple. So I'm just gonna scribble a little bit on here. And go back with my water. Move the color around. too much water on my brush there and I'm gonna come back with my just so you can even take this just so straight to the crown before you add water to it not straight to the crown but well, I guess you could do that too but you might mess your crown up but um, you can actually move the color around with your just so also so I'll show you that too It's just so pretty. I just think it's so, such a pretty look. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to use the ultramarine blue again. I think I'm just going to use those three colors. And move that out of the way so they don't get messed up. So I'm going to color in my petals. Be careful not to stick your finger in any wet paint anywhere. Then I'm going to go straight to my gesso. Whoops, let's make sure it's dry. Straight to the gesso. And then it takes it a minute, but it activates it. Now, see, I'm getting gesso everywhere. So now it looks more like um, acrylic paint. instead of water soluble wax pastels. It kind of makes it more opaque too when you do this technique. Oops. So keep that in mind. And see it looks more opaque than the other one. So uh, to make it match I'm going to Go back with some more gesso. <clears throat> I'm losing my voice today. My son had his first football game of the season last night and hooting and hollering. I guess I've lost my voice. Okay. So that looks more like the other one there. So my favorite way to do it is to put the crayon directly onto the flower and then wet it with the water and then get the gesso on top of that. Okay, the next step is I'm thinking I'm going to use a different blue for the background. Let's see what this one looks like. I want it to look more like, you know, the sky. I think that'll work. So what I'm going to do, start one end or the other, whichever, and I'm just going to wet the paper. And then I'm going to sit this crayon down and I'm going to get some straight from there and I'm just going to let it go like a watercolor. Just let it flow into wherever it wants to go. Well, wherever I put the water. It's a fast, easy way to really cover your backgrounds. I 
give them some color, but still have that really pretty soft watercolor look. So you can see it. See, see the nice blue? It's kind of soft and subtle. And then the white. So I guess it just really depends on what you like. I like the I like the background to have some kind of color. You don't have to be too perfect when you're wet in your paper either. You just want to get it just a little damp just so that the color will move around a little bit. And if you get it on your flowers it's really okay because um, it's supposed to kind of look real free and flowy and artsy. You can go back to and add more color. You can make it darker. You see how this um, mixed media paper, how well it holds the um, moisture? It's a really nice, nice paper. Especially if you don't know what exactly you're going to be ending up doing. I'm just using what's dribbled, dribbled down onto the paper here. You notice some of my my um, flowers are kind of lifting up a little bit, like right there. That's okay. We have to um, seal it anyway. So I'm going to finish this up and I'm going to dry it, and I'll be right back. Okay, now it's dry. Oh, it's stuck. <laughs> now it's dry, and I want you to see the difference between the before and after. So it's very pretty. It's a very art, arty, artsy fartsy look. <laughs> I don't know how to call it. It's just really soft and sweet, and I don't know. I just like the look. So you can leave it plain, or you can do something like this. I like this. Um, but we're gonna go one step further. I need to move some of these crayons out of the way before I mess them up. These are a great art journaling tool for those who are getting into art journaling. All right, I'm gonna take brown um, or coffee archival ink, and I am going to go around the edges. Whoops. Still a little wet right there. And this just kind of gives it that really uh, vintage look that I like. Then you want to gently, not too much, just gently press down those um, petals if they pop up a little bit. You just want to gently bend. Um, remember, we're going to seal it again with the matte medium, just like we did the other one. So all of those edges that are popping up. Um, won't, won't, you know, they won't hurt nothing because they'll be squished back down.
Okay. All right, so now we're going to do the um, matte medium. We're going to seal it with the matte medium. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to use the card to um, scrape it along. It gives it a little character. You just want to be gentle. Don't push too hard. Make sure you get all the edges. Can you see all the different little grooves that have been left behind by the... I like that look. I like that look a lot. I'm going to dry this. And I'll be right back with a second coat. This is the second coat. With this technique, I like to do a second coat because we actually glued something on top. Where when this one, we only did one coat and it's because it was just stamped in ink. So um, when you glue something down onto a surface, it's good to give it a couple coats of whatever um, medium you like to seal things with. kind of like to just drag it, skim at the surface a little bit and just give it a little bit more of the of the texture. I'm trying to catch it in the light. See all that cool texture? All right, I'm going to dry this and I'll be right back. Okay, now it's dry. It's got both coats of the matte medium on there. And you can see it's it's not real shiny, shiny, but it's supposed to be matte, but it's got a little bit of a, I don't know, it's got a really nice feel to it when it's dry. So I've got all this pretty texture. Okay, so now I'm going to, while that's cooling down and making sure it's getting good and dry, I'm going to make the pocket that goes on the inside with the leftover page protectors from the other day, the brag book video. I'm going to need my paper trimmer. Whoa. Even more. My paper trimmer. One of those leftover pieces. I'm going to trim off this white piece real quick. Don't need it. Okay, so again, it's going to be the height of the book is four and a half, so we're going to make this four and a quarter. Quarter. And then we are going to cut it, I think I'm going to cut it down to five inches, both pieces, don't take them apart yet, five inches. And we can use this again for the, um, the washi tape, or you can make another pocket. How much is this? This would be... Yeah, we can make this into another pocket too. All right, so now we've got a piece that's five inches by four and a quarter. So we're going to open it up, and on one of the sides, we're going to take two inches off. And the reason we're doing that is because we're going to have a flap, like a closure. So two inches. So now we've got one that's three inches and one that's five inches. Okay? And then we're going to kind of gently fold that over so we can see where our flap is. Kind of use your fingernail. Okay, so there's a flap and there's where our pocket's going to be. Let's move these out of the way. All right, now I need to find some washi tape that matches. I've got a whole loads here of different washi. We used this one last time. 
That one's going crazy. Let's see what would look nice with my book here. It's not very vintagey looking, is it? Um, that's not. <laughs> that's cute. Surely I've got something in here that's... Let's see, what's this look like? That might be kind of cool. I'll use this one. Not really sure where this came from. I think it might be Tim Holtz. <laughs> Again. Okay. So I'm gonna use this washi tape. So first thing we need to do is I'm gonna use a magnet closure. Gotta find my magnets. I never seem to have my magnets out and ready. Okay. These are those basic gray magnets. You need a negative and a positive. And then I'm just going to use a, a glue dot. These are, who makes these? Glue dots, glue dots, adhesive. Just glue dots makes them. These are mini glue dots. I'm going to take my pokey tool. I'm going to pick up one, or you could just sit it right down on there. So I'm going to, I don't know, just kind of eyeball it. It doesn't have to be perfect. Right there. Let's just go right there. I didn't, you notice I didn't even take the sticky sign off of there. I probably should have, but it's okay. I'm going to put another sticky dot. And then you kind of want to. Press them down. All right, and the tricky part is getting them back apart again because these are powerful magnets. They don't want to come apart. Come on, there we go. Ah! Little sneaky buggers. All right, we better hurry up and get this covered. So what we're going to do is we're going to cover it with this washi tape, like so. We're going to cover this one up here before it gets out of control. And this one I'm going to go right up to that flap edge as well. Okay. Now we need to gently pull this up. Flip it over. And we're just going to wrap it around. Whoops. Left the folded over part on there. All right. Wrap it around to the back side. Try to match it up. If you don't, that's okay. Same. Well, you know, up here, I think I'm going to go like this. I'm going to go cover it exactly the same, except I've already got the right side. So I'm going to go one. Keep getting off camera there. Cover up the top part. And cover up this bottom part. And then I'm going to get some scissors. I'm going to trim that up. Trim that up. I think I'm even going to round the corners just a little bit. Okay, now we need to close the sides off here. I'm going to tear a piece off. I'm just going to guess. That's perfect. Flip it over. Fold it over. Tear a piece off. Guessing again. Turn it around, fold it over. Take scissors.
like that. So then we've got a little closure there. I think I'm going to add a strip to the bottom because um, I want to be able to glue it um, on the bottom and I don't want to see the glue. So we'll push strip along the bottom there even though it's already closed. Fold it over. Trim off those edges. Okay, so now we got our great little, let's go ahead and stick these extra flowers in there. Great little pouch made up with our leftover, um, what are they called? Page protector pieces. Okay, I think the cover is good. I'm going to go ahead and gently fold this over. Where's my, um, there's, I'm going to be gentle about it. This is the extra pocket. Then I'm going to go ahead and get some paper clips ready and I'm going to get my glue. Just going to run a line right here and right, whoops, right here. I'll close it, hold it for a minute. Put some paper clips on it. Oh, that's the one that I glued in the last video. I stuck it in the middle instead of on the outside. Okay. I'll let that hold there for a second. So this is going to be the front flap the front flap, the front cover. I'm sorry about that. I'm just bending these joints a little bit, a little bit at a time. Okay, so it's going to go like this. All right, so this, this pocket needs to get glued down right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run glue along the bottom, along the sides, or just where that tape is and in the middle where all that tape is. And then I'm just going to eyeball it. For a second. That, um, that little piece of washi tape helps that magnet not be so strong and sticky and come off all the time. Keeps it good and tight and secure in there. Okay, so now we got that pocket in. So far, so good. I'm gonna get my, um, oh, that glue I used was Scotch uh, Quick Dry. So now I'm. Oh, that was my doggies. Sorry. So now I'm going to get my crop dial back out. It's set at, oh, now it's moved. We're going to set it at a half an inch. We're going to, the spine is the first one nearest this pocket. So we're going to center it up there, punch a couple holes. Like that. Whoops. Throwing stuff. And then we're going to let that dry a minute while we get our pages ready. Now I didn't, um, paint any of these flowers for this video, but you certainly can. So what I'm going to do here is take two of them, fold them together. That's one signature. Take two more, fold them together. That's two signatures. And then the last two See, it doesn't even bother me if they're sticking up like the little um, flower pieces are sticking up. It doesn't bother me a bit. Alright, so there's our three signatures. Now we're going to go through and we're going to do the same thing. Punch a hole right there in the, the crease. Now all we need is some seam binding. Let me go find some and I'll be right back. Okay, I found some seam binding. I'm going to use this pretty blue color. I think it'll look really nice with my with my pretty covers. 
Um, this seam binding was white and I used um, Broken China Distress Ink from Tim Holtz and dyed it and crinkled it and then just wrapped it around this old uh, jewelry. Uh, some charms or something came on this little thing so I'm just reusing it. So I've cut me three pieces. Um, they're about a yard long, 36 inches. Go from the outside. Well, look at this. And then back out to the other hole. Kind of even them up. I'm thinking that my matte medium isn't quite dry. That's why everything's kind of sticky. I'm going to take these paper clips off. So there's our cool pocket in the back right there. Just holding our little extra things. And then there's our cool pocket up front that we could slide stuff in. And then to close it up, you just let one set of those seam bindings go to one side and one to the other. One goes around this way and then one comes around this way. And then you tie a bow. Oops, no, that's okay. So just like that. So this was my original one. I didn't use any of those little small stamps. Um, I just kept st stayed with the big ones in one style of flower this time but you see it's that same pretty um, same pretty effect so I'm gonna untie this and let it the matte medium dry a little bit better so if you like this video give me a thumbs up be sure to subscribe and stay tuned for other techniques on um, how I finish some of my books so we've got this that we've done with the uh, old book pages and the water-soluble um, wax pastels. And we've done this one where we stamped um, with Distress Ink and did the wicking and then re-stamped it with Black Archival um, and sealed it. And then surely I'll have a couple more techniques to show you. Maybe, maybe I'll show you how I got this look um, with the stamped book pages and this look here it's kind of pretty so stay tuned for more and if you uh, have um, if you have anything you'd like me to demonstrate for you just leave a comment in the comment section below and I hope you try to make one of these and let me know what you think I'll see you next time bye